Welcome to the final installment of the Chicken Atlas, my virtual guide on all things chicken. Today we're going to top things off by making a rich, roasty, mad flavorful roasted chicken stock using leftover chicken bones and fresh aromatics. Aromatics, of course, being defined as any of various plants, herbs, spices, and liquids that impart a lively fragrance or flavor to food and drink. Trusty food lover's companion here. So similarly to the way I feel about roasting a chicken, I think that learning to make a decent chicken stock is really a must-know technique for anybody trying to boost their game and their finesse in the kitchen. Homemade stock is crucial for making killer homemade soups, stews, sauces. You can take a bath in it. You can use it as a base for braising liquid. You can cook rice with it. And I know there are like 3,000 other applications that I can't think of right now, but you get the idea. Store-bought stock or bouillon cubes or bouillon paste is totally fine in a pinch, but you know, the real deal, nothing compares. Yeah, I've worked with a number of store-bought stocks and no store-bought stock provides the same mouthfeel and just raw flavor that like homemade fresh chicken stock really has. Today we're making a dark roasted stock which gets its color from the deeply caramelized ingredients that we're going to make right now. Over the past few weeks I've collected a fair amount of chicken bones from previous videos, but if you have three to four frozen leftover chicken carcasses then it's time for you to make some stock. Start by spreading all the leftover chicken bones on a large sheet tray or roasting tray. I like to rub my bones down with some oil to help them char along and don't worry the extra fat doesn't matter here, we're just gonna skim most of it away anyways. And if you live in a small apartment with no ventilation system, here's a little tip for you. Buy one of these cheapo box fans and orient it so it blasts air out the window, then create a draft by opening another window. Problem solved. Sort of. The aromatic vegetables I'll be using today will be a classic mirepoix, or in other words, onion, carrots, and celery, with a ratio of 2 to 1 to 1. Slice the dirty root ends off and leave the skin on. I find that the skin makes for a more flavorful end result, and we're going to strain everything anyway, so who cares. When making stock, I really like to keep it fairly simple so that I can customize it to fit different flavor profiles in the future. After about 45 minutes in a ripping hot oven, the chicken should be super charred. Don't be afraid to take this chicken a step past roasted. We want things to have a fair amount of char, but also not, you know, burnt to straight carbon. I have this nifty large and in charge stock pot, but just use the largest pot you have if you don't have one for stock. Add all that chicken to the pot, and think of those little burnt bits stuck to the bottom of the sheet pan as little flavor orbs. We must harness that power. To do so, we need to put the tray over some heat, then use a flavorful liquid to help uproot those stuck on bits. This is called deglazing. I'm using white wine. Red wine works great too, but you can also just use water if that's what you have. Pour on the wine, be careful of the steam, and scrape off the bits with a wooden spoon or something similar. Now pour that deglazed deliciousness all over those veggies that we just chopped up. This coating adds flavor, but also helps the veg roast up nicely because of all the fat from the drippings. Pop the veggies back on that same tray that we just deglazed on and roast them back in a ripping hot oven until they char up nicely and the ends of the vegetable begin to look burnt. About 30 minutes. Remember, we're not going to season any of the chicken or any of these vegetables throughout the stock making process. Keeping an unsalted stock will allow for more flexibility when using your stock in the future. I pretty much always prefer a roasted stock, but certain dishes or sauces do call for a lighter non-roasted chicken stock. To make a non-roasted stock, simply skip over these roasting steps. Regular chicken stock is still solid, but it's just not as complex and flavorful as the roasted stock, in my opinion. Once the veg is nice and toasty, transfer them into the stock pot to hug it out with the chicken bones. Okay, so we've roasted Roasted off our chicken bones and vegetables, now for the rest of the aromatics. I'm going to add a few fresh bay leaves, garlic cloves, black peppercorns, then a bunch of fresh thyme and parsley to my stock. You can opt to leave these few aromatics out or just switch them up for other ones that you'd like. I like adding ginger and fennel to my stock sometimes, but then it isn't so neutral. Now we need to fill the stock pot up with cold water until it reaches about two inches past the top of the bones. This is optional, but cold water helps the stock to keep clear and clean. At first, most stocks are fatty and dirty, if you will, from the protein aggregates also known as scum. Once the stock comes up to a boil, much of that stuff will float to the top, so use a ladle to skim it off. I like to dump my scum in a bowl of water because it cleans the ladle as I use it. After the first skim, lower the heat down to a gentle simmer. A neat trick that I learned from Chef Jacob Burton is to slightly offset the stock pot on the burner to create a convection cycle. Orienting the pot this way allows for the water to boil up on one side, then push most of that fat, scum, and unwanted bits to the other side of the pot, making the skimming process a lot more like concentrated and easier, because everything's in one spot. A ladle is a crucial tool when making stock, but I also fell in love with this thing that I picked up in Japan. I don't know what it's called, but I call it a skimmer. I'm not sure the actual name, but this thing is the beast at collecting scum while leaving the actual stock in the pot, which can sometimes be an issue with ladles. I use the skimmer after the initial fat ladling process as the stock simmers away. This is by no means necessary, but it was a nice little under five buck purchase that I definitely recommend. From here, we're looking for the slightest simmer. You should see a few bubbles, that's it. Let this roll anywhere between four to 12 hours. Generally speaking, the longer the simmer, the richer and more flavorful the stock. I usually start my stock around like 8 a.m. and let it ride until like 6 p.m. or so. 
but four to six hours is totally okay too. Just do what your schedule allows for. If having something on your stove all day gives you anxiety or you just need the burners, you can move the stock pot to the oven and cook it in there over low heat. After the time has passed, we're ready to strain the stock, but before we strain, we're gonna hit it with a few cups of cold water. The cold water will shock the fat in the stock and tickle some of the remaining fat to the top of the pot. From here, we can perform one final skim. After that, I like to strain the stock twice, one with a standard size strainer, then the second run with a fine mesh strainer. It's what I got. But I understand that probably sounds super extra for some of you, so just strain it once if you'd like. I'll be using these large Cambro containers, but larger mixing bowls should do the trick here. The first strain is meant to catch the larger ingredients. Oh, and also remove those larger bits that won't fit in your strainer if you have to. Oops. Then use any tool, in this case the back of a rice spoon, <laughs> to squeeze any remaining juices out of those aromatics. Inevitably, particles will stream into your stock, so that's why I strain it a second time with a fine mesh to make sure it's fully clean. A few other things to think about. Gently simmering the stock over a long, slow cooking process is the best way to tickle out most of the flavor. If you were to rapidly boil the stock the entire time, it would most likely become cloudy due to the fat emulsifying into the liquid, which isn't like a bad thing, it's just different and not as clean in flavor. Also, this technique works pretty much for any other animal bone based stock. If you have leftover turkey bones, bones from steaks or chops, or maybe a big pork shoulder, make it a habit to save those in the freezer. Over time, you'll build up a bone arsenal, then you'll be ready to make stock like whenever. TBH, most of the stock I make is definitely a mishmash of different bones. It's sort of like a master stock because I use it for everything and it kind of has everything in it. Again, this is an optional step, but chilling the stock in an ice bath makes the cooling process and therefore the packing and storing process a lot quicker. But you can totally also just leave the stock in your fridge overnight and take care of it the next morning when things are cooled off. It's a smart idea, especially if you are freezing the stock, to date and label it. I mean, come on, nobody needs an unidentifiable frost burnt plastic ice chunk taking up prime real estate in the freezer. If you've been tuning in for a while, you know that I love these little deli containers, but if you don't have containers like these, you could always use plastic Ziploc bags. I would just make sure to double it up so nothing leaks out. Also, if using deli containers, it's a good idea to leave an inch or so of room at the top so the stock doesn't expand out as it freezes. There really is this unexplainable peace of mind that comes at the end of making stock. The work is done and you know there's always a flavorful liquid base on deck whenever you need it. The stock will stay pretty fresh in your freezer for like four to six months. To use it, just pull it out a day or two before you want to use it or just defrost it on the stove or in the microwave. And if you are watching these in order, this concludes the chicken atlas. We've roasted chicken, we've broken down a whole chicken, we've messed with the white and the dark meat, and now we've made stock. And I really hope that you found this video and overall series helpful. I had a lot of fun making it. If you did find it helpful, please like the video. And if you're new here, give me a sub, toss me a sub. What, what, what's a guy gotta do? All right, anyways, seriously, thanks for watching if you made it this far, and I will see all of y'all's next week, so bye bye